heroin use and deaths from overdoses of it is on the rise across the region, but has it reached crisis proportions here in Hagerstown? And what effect, if any, does the movement towards legalization of marijuana have on the popularity of heroin? Ashley, what do you think? You know, I was talking to a friend of mine, and, and I have to say, so, you know, my generation, the millennial generation, I'm at the very end of, uh, end of that tier, um, I have a lot of friends that were sent to Afghanistan and came back with opiate issues, which is not dissimilar to other plights of veterans in other generations. Sure. Um, he alluded to me, or, or he was telling me about his experience in, in a rehabilitation center, and I thought it was interesting that the rehabilitation center, which was a Catholic-oriented rehabilitation center, cited marijuana as the gateway drug. This is not something that I believe in. Um, I, I don't believe that the legalization of, of marijuana has anything to do with the popularity of heroin. If you look at it on a chemical level, they're two very different drugs. Um, and, and heroin is something that you try once and you could kill yourself or you could become terribly addicted. Um, studies have shown that marijuana does neither of those things to somebody. Um, I, I don't think that the people that go after ma heroin are the same people that, that go after marijuana. As, as a professional woman who deals with a lot of international clients, as far as I'm concerned, everyone smokes weed. The, the weed smoker isn't the person sitting in a tie-dye shirt in their parents' basement right, on the couch right. watching cartoons. That's not it. The average marijuana smoker is the hardcore 60-hour-a-week executive that busts their butt and they have this release, or it's somebody that uses it for anxiety or for pain. Heroin is something entirely different. But well, is there a portion of the population that is getting into drugs that may use, may turn to marijuana as opposed to heroin if it were legalized? Well, so yes, absolutely. Uh, if you look at the statistics from Washington State and, and Colorado, the one thing that's occurred in both of those places, once marijuana was legalized for recreational use, heroin rates dropped to the floor uh, by a significant percent. So. The ish, this and do they see a cause and effect uh, uh, correlation there? I think that we are still early in the process, but I think there is a cause and effect potentially correlation there. So here's, here's the deal. Um, this notion that somehow marijuana is a gateway drug, the only way you can make that argument is because of 80 years of failed prohibition that we've had against drugs in general. Drugs are a health issue, not a criminal issue. Throwing somebody in jail for doing something that they're addicted to, first of all, if you throw somebody in jail who is a heroin addict, heroin withdrawal can kill you, literally. So you either give them methadone or you can literally watch that person wither away and die before your eyes. So You give them another opiate. That, well, I mean, the treatment for opiate addiction is another opiate. Exactly. But there is more to the problem. So, you know, we went through a heroin crisis in the 70s and 80s. Well, starting in the late 60s with the Vietnam War, but also based on, on popular culture and everything that happened. You know, um, and then it, it kind of died off as other things happened, and then it came back, and really the, this particular resurgence of heroin was started because in the early 2000s, pharmaceutical companies were giving away opiates exactly. like they were candy. Exactly. And if you give somebody started with Oxycontin, with you. which is three to four times more powerful than street heroin for very, very minor issues, you know, I have back pain, here's a, a prescription for Oxycontin, right, right. then you're creating an, addic an addiction problem. And I think, you know, again, the, the whole gateway drug argument, the only way you can make that is if somebody goes out as a kid, they go behind the bleachers at high school, smoke a joint with somebody, oh, wait a minute, this is illegal. Maybe they'll think about doing something else. But it is a very large step to go from smoking a joint to injecting something into yourself. Sure. So I think that's kind of a bogus argument. Well, you know, you, you, had, you had said earlier on in your rant there um, <laughs> that... Uh, a very well-crafted it, it was. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was very nice and informative. It was a great rant. But um, rant you would said is that you don't, your rant. <laughs> you don't lock somebody up who has an addiction. I mean, it's a, you, know, you, you, don't, you shouldn't do that, okay? Uh, but, but I'll tell you, and this headline from the Herald Mail speaks volumes. Um, you know, you had the, the alleged head of a heroin ring uh, 
uh, in the tri in the quad state area, okay, uh, faces 22 charges and over I don't know a couple million dollars in fines and a life sentence plus I don't know how many more. And what do they do? He goes before a federal judge and they release him with with home detention and a monitor. Well, and you know I think uh, you, you know, know he deserves to be in jail forever. You're bringing and up ever a, and ever, <laughs> and you're, you are bringing up a, a distinction which I think is important to be made. When I was talking about throwing somebody in jail, I'm talking about the user, sure, not the dealer. Dealer, yeah. the right. dealers need to go away. Well, and when Bottom you're line. dealing with something like heroin, heroin, much like uh, crack cocaine, much like methamphetamines, that is a that is a substance that you arguably could charge somebody with attempted murder with mm -hmm. because it potentially could be sure. lethal. Yeah. Um, and, and we've seen it happen, and we've seen it happen to one of our one of our own local, just not too long ago. Well, and the, the sad part is because this latest wave of heroin addiction started with opiates that were, that were pharmaceutical opiates, which are much stronger, they're starting to cut heroin with all kinds of substances that make it much stronger and make it much more likely to overdose on. I mean, this is a real crisis nationwide. There are literally tens of thousands of people dying every year from overdoses. And I don't think we're really dealing with it very well. Again, it's not a criminal issue. It, it is a criminal issue when it comes to the supply side of things. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the to the other side of things, to the to the to the use side of things, we have to find a better way of doing of dealing with it. it what we have been doing has not been working since the late '60s. So no, you said no, something no. else that I want to speak to earlier in your rant, as Bob called it. Uh, you, you spoke to the fact of the the prescription medications. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting here's a neat statistic. Uh, the United States has about six and a half percent of the world population. We use, we consume 80 percent of the prescription narcotics consumed in the world. 80 percent. We consume 99 percent of the OxyContin products mm -hmm. that's consumed in the world. That's, that's a huge statistic in my mind. It is. And you know, um, I am. Um, a little plug here. I sit on the board of, of Phoenix Health, um, and one of the things that we do is we um, we dose using methadone, um, Subutex, and Suboxone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and but there's 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 so many other facets of of what we do there uh, because we don't just we don't just treat the disease with medication. We we treat it with counseling, and we treat it with uh, a the opportunities to come in and be able to, uh, you know, uh, have someone help you do a resume and and do all those things. We do it's a it's a one stop shop for us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that way we can. You know our our goal is not to increase our clients. Our, our goal is to decrease our clients to where we have none. Right. And um, the goal you know, of a nonprofit should be to put itself out of business. Exactly, and that's and that's what what we do. We you know we we don't we wish that there wasn't a reason to have this. Right. You know. Um, but I'm telling you, you know, uh, and, and I and I want to touch on this because I think it's important. Uh, uh, the city of Hagerstown just got a $500,000 grant to, to hire more cops through the through the cops hiring process. Uh, it's a three-year grant, okay, totaling $500,000. Uh, the problem is, is that, you know, currently we have more sworn personnel in HPD than we've ever had in the history of the city of Hagerstown. I mean, 107. All right. Uh, if we hire more police officers. All right. We've got to pay for them after three years. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked at, we, we had this problem when uh, we got grant money to hire firefighters, okay? And we got enough that everybody said, oh, we need to hire 18 firefighters, which is only 19 because we needed a, a captain, a right. training captain. All right. And I kept telling them, we, we don't want to do that <laughs> because eventually we've got to pay for those guys, right. all on our own, you know? Do I think that we need more police on the street uh, doing things? You know, at the 107 sworn personnel, that's one per every 389 citizens, all right? Prison guards have it worse. Right. So, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't think we need more cops. I think we need a better utilization, and I think we need to be focusing on other areas. And I have the last word on that, so stay tuned, because in three minutes, we'll be back to discuss the start of the NFL season and all the possible controversies it can bring. Stay with us.